Welcome back, you hear Goldberg. Today I'll be talking about my view of the American Solidarity Party. This was actually requested some months earlier and I just got delayed. But in any case, when most of us think of a third party, it's like, okay, Libertarian National Convention, Jill Stein, Ralph Nader, a hell of a lot of cringe. When it comes to the Solidarity Party, however, you know, they seem to have a cogent view of what they want to accomplish. They're not just presenting like a lot of Americans, they support Democrats or Republicans because of a few choice issues, even if they find everything else to be kind of anathema. But in this case, the solidarity people are saying, hey, most of you would probably be in agreement with like 90 plus percent of our platform. So is there some potential there? And I could see this party, if it had adequate social media presence, background organization, they might be able to win in the future a governorship, maybe a congressional seat. A lot of that is what if, but still. So I wanted to go through what they believe in, what they're advocating, and how it might actually be beneficial to many of you. The Solidarity Party is grounded in the principles of Christian democracy and also distributism. Now the latter concept I'm not terribly familiar with. When I was in college, this monk chick kept sending me material like, oh, check it out, Martin, it's awesome. And I didn't bother delving in. Although recently I picked up John Ward's hard-to-find Christian socialism book, so I'm excited to read that, get a better understanding of what it entails. But specifically with Christian democracy, there's a lot of related parties in South Central America and also Europe, although great variety in terms of what they believe. So Merkel, Christian Democratic Union, that's just a moderate pro-business party. In the Scandinavian countries, they might be slightly more hawkish and right-wing. It's going to depend. Let's get a sense of what this version of Christian democracy with the Solidarity Party translates to. They are ostensibly a socially conservative and fiscally progressive party, which is highly uncommon in the American context, but it somewhat makes sense. The centerpiece of their platform with economics revolves around, we want to support families. We want to ensure that as much as possible you can have single income households. So there is a subdued element of traditionalism baked in, which I can find more palatable than some moron ranting about trad conservatism with free markets, deregulation, and all that nonsense. And in fact, if you look at it, you've got Democratic Party, it says, oh, we support the family, but they really just want single mothers running the households. The Republicans believe in family values, but then they support policies that destroy the family, make them less economically secure, wipe out their benefits at work. So it's nice to see the solidarity people saying, hey, maybe there's a different way we could be approaching things, especially in the 21st century. On that note, their tax policy is to be more in favor of the working middle class, heavier burden on the super rich. Oh, but that's communism. Well, honestly, right now we have communism for the rich. So it's just, you know, turning the tables a little bit. And I say communism for the rich. The Democrats support the same structure. The Democrats have not seriously come out and said, we're going to go after the elites and tax them. They campaign on that, and they always back off like the cowards that they are when it comes down to decision day. Another truly fascinating aspect to their platform is a desire to end no-fault divorce. This would be pretty revolutionary, even if you only did it in one state. You know the Democrats would never be on that side. And the Republicans, I found that conservative men tend to hide behind their wives or their wives-to-be. So they'll never take a position that's, you know, in a defined manner against, oh, she can do whatever she wants because they, oh, I don't want to seem like I'm sexist. Now, some of you are going to go, no, but you're just an incel. You're wrong. Because, in fact, Trump was trying to eliminate the bush. <laughs> of course he was. Like many other things that... He was going to do with his, you know, five-dimensional chess strategy if he just had another hundred years in office. But yeah, I mean, imagine the impact socially, economically, if we actually were able to roll back the crazy divorce laws. In the realm of foreign policy, they want us to be less engaged in these costly military conflicts, just cooperate with people, speak to them, don't try to police the world. It might be somewhat unrealistic at this stage that we're in with our currency problems, but philosophically, it's a step in the right direction. And finally, with immigration, somewhat squishy. They want a pathway to citizenship for the dreamers. I don't get the fixation on that. Perhaps it is inevitable. 
uh, where we are today. But remember, Yair Bolsonaro was able to join the Social Liberal Party, and he won the presidency uh, with their backing and just, you know, changed things around. So it's not impossible for someone to get involved and then uh, pull some levers. You never know. Maybe Goldberg's going to join this party. It has a much more competent understanding of the issues we face, and I think it would have broad-based appeal, more so than GOP 2024, or, you know, Biden once again. So let me know what you think about the Solidarity Party. Would you vote for them? Are you going to get, are you going to actually become a member yourself?